Now, from Wish TV, this is The Zone Extra, presented by Franciscan Health Sports Medicine. Coming up tonight, postseason action continues across the state, and the football tournament is underway. In the coach's corner, meet the longtime Lutheran volleyball coach who has the Saints one step away from the state finals. Plus, our athletes of the week are enjoying postseason success in not one, but two different state tournaments this fall. It's definitely both mentally and physically challenging. No tricks. It's all treats on the Zone Extra right now. Was that a unicorn we just saw? What is going on? The Zone Extra is getting weirder by the week. This is Charlie Clifford with you tonight. It is championship week in soccer and cross country, plus football. State tournament, ladies and gentlemen. We are ready to roll. Coach's corner tonight. Her Saints are marching to class 1A volleyball semi-state. Legendary Lutheran head coach, Kathy Anderson, in studio with us tonight. Park Tudor girls soccer playing for a state title on Saturday. Two members of the team are enjoying postseason success in another sport as well. That story, Gretchen Farley, Paige Dill, we're going to meet them. Plus, we're going to campus, Clemson University, catching up with former Zionsville Eagles star golfer Annabelle Pancake. Now, let's take a look at what turned out to be a wild week beginning on Friday night, the start of the state tournament in football defending 4a state champs mount vernon they're out in the third quarter mount vernon qb sneak touchdown but new pal what a fourth quarter it was for the team that went unbeaten in the regular season class 4a martinsville opening with a shutout win artesians 49 points greenwood nothing in class 1a defending state champ lutheran flying start. The top ranked Saints dominate 10th ranked South Putnam. I was there. Jackson Willis is legit. Class 4A, number eight Mooresville hosting Lebanon. Pioneers a 16 point lead at the break. Lebanon fights back to get within four, but then Nick Patterson turned off the lights. He's really good. Mooresville wins 34-24. We preached all week we couldn't make mental mistakes, and boy, we made a bunch that first half. Give our kids credit, though. Nick and the boys stayed in there and played hard and got the lead at halftime and got two touchdowns up. And that was huge for us. It feels good, man. We we battled, as you can see, 34-24. Had some adversity in the beginning of the season, but we fall back like we always do. Coach Gillen in good hands with Nick Patterson also in 4A. Second rank Ron Colley getting its playoff run started. This was impressive. The Royals roll past Shortridge. After the game, first year head coach Eric Quintana joined us live on FaceTime Friday. First time coach has been on the show. His first year has gone well. The state championship is the ultimate goal. Um, you know, we, we don't want to look forward at all as, as every coach does as you get into playoffs because the playoff playoff football is, is tough in Indiana. It's it's a hard thing to do, but uh, this group of uh, seniors in this in this football team is, has all the capability to win a, win a state title. When you play and coach at Ron Colley, that's simply the expectation. Thank you to coach for joining us. Now to the pitch where we're through the semi-state round of boys and girls soccer state tournaments. The first of six championship matches underway tomorrow night at Carroll Stadium on the campus of IUPUI. The action goes through Saturday. This is the weekend you live for. If you play soccer in this state on the girls side, second straight year, Carmel 3A championship game appearance. The Hounds are ranked third. That was a late goal in the first half from Adeline Cameron to knock off center Grove. That was the difference. It was one nil. They're going to get Noblesville. The Millers have a problem. Uh, no problem. I should say seven nothing over Crown Point. Noblesville back in the state championship for a third time in four seasons. In 1A, congratulations, Park Tudor, the top-ranked Panthers. It was a 1-0 win over Evansville Modern Day. Speaking of Park Tudor on the boys' side, they're also in the final. Panthers 2-0 over Westview, joining the Panthers in the 1A championship match. It is Greenwood Christian. How about that story? Which beat Forest Park 1-0 in the semi-state. In 2A, we're buff looking to defend its boy. state title. Braves beat Evansville 2-1. 
That was Evansville Memorial, I should say, in 3A. Congrats, Columbus North Bulldogs. 2-1 over Cathedral. They're going to get Noblesville for the title. Miller's got a 3-2 win over Penn. First time in school history. Both Noblesville boys and girls are in the title game in the same season. Now to volleyball. We're last Saturday, regional round of the state tournament. Semi-state matchups are now set with the teams just one step away from the state finals in 4A. How about Hamilton Southeastern? The, Re the Royals regional champs wins over Carroll and McCutcheon on Saturday. Second rank Yorktown also capturing its class 4A regional crown. 3A Western Boone, a regional winner. Cecina victorious in 2A and in 1A. The Lutheran Saints are the regional champs. Much more on the Saints in a moment. Cross country, you are through semi-state. Team semi-state winners, first on the boys' side, Fishers, Carmel, Columbus North. Other advancing teams include Zionsville, Center Grove, Hamilton Southeastern, and Bloomington South. In girls' action, Noblesville, Columbus North, both semi-state wins, other girls' teams advancing. Hamilton Southeastern, North Central, Carmel, and Bloomington South, the state finals Saturday in Terre Haute. We're taking a quick break here on the Zone Extra. Up next, we're going to the coach's corner. Her Saints are one step away from the Volleyball State Finals. It's Kathy Anderson of Lutheran in studio for an exclusive conversation. It's still ahead. Two girls competing in not one, but two different state tournaments this fall. This story is real, and you only get it next from Park Tudor on the Zone Extra. This is the Zone Extra. Presented by Franciscan Health Sports Medicine. The Coach's Corner. Presented by Bailey and Wood Mortgage Lender. Hey, this is the Zone Extra. You are in the Coach's Corner tonight with head coach Kathy Anderson of Luther and the Saints are one win away from making a state championship appearance. Coach, I don't know if any team has been on a better roll than your Saints of late. Seven straight wins, 10 of 11 how is this team playing its best volleyball at the right time of the year? I think that's what the whole season's all about, is just trying to peak at the right time. So it's about putting the pieces together, taking the hits and knocks as it comes along, um, but just getting everything firing on all cylinders at the postseason time. And gonna, that's what we focus on. We're going to get to your story in a moment. Coach Anderson has been a saint literally since she was this tall. It's, <laughs> it's a great story. First, with your team. It doesn't appear, Coach, that you're leaning on a star player heading to the semi-state to see to come up. That a good thing or a bad thing? Break that one down for me. So I think it's a good thing. Um, we really do, it takes all of us on the court all the time. So it's not like you just have to shut down one player, you right. have to focus on one player. It's, I think it's a much harder team for other teams to focus against and work on how, for a good game plan. You know, um, just because there are so many different assets. So if someone's not, not having a great game, guess what? Someone else picks it up. So and that's just the whole team concept of the whole thing. We're looking at how to stop the Saints. I know you have a nice mixture of seniors, and then you have the sophomore libero. Please right. break down the key pieces that have come together this season. So. Um, Catherine Irwin is our libero, and she really has gotten a lot better throughout the season, and that's just made a huge difference. She doesn't play like a sophomore. Um, she's about as humble as they come, though. Um, she's just a hardworking one of those individuals that you just love to coach. Perfect. And then um, on the other end, we have a senior setter, which kind of ends up being kind of like your quarterback, you know? Sure. So they kind of run the show on the court and make sure that things are happening the way they're supposed to happen. So. Um, those two key roles, I think, just really balances it out and meshes the whole team together well. If you give one game ball out for the regional win over Edinburgh, who does it go to? Ooh, that's tough. Putting you on the spot it, here. It is. <laughs> I mean, I would say Grace King had a great game. So she really stepped up and up did front. well. Up front, yeah. Yep. Yeah. But they all did well. Like, it's hard to... That's the, that's the hard part about this team. It's also the great part about this team is that just that they all do earn it together. You speak from experience, 21 seasons for Coach Anderson at Lutheran. I understand though, this story goes back much longer than that. Please tell me how long you've known that Lutheran Saints logo. So I was six months old when we moved to Indianapolis 
and my dad was a founding faculty member of Lutheran High School. So one of the four fa founding faculty members. So been around for a long time, literally have grown up with the school, <laughs> went to school there, my husband went to school there. Um, we've had one son graduate, one son's still there. Congratulations. So thank you, so been around for a while. You know, we, we've seen plenty of coaches coming back to their alma maters. I don't know if we've seen one like this, where it's literally <laughs> started before you had your first birthday. Uh, 20 years on the job, you know how tough it is to get to this point in the season. Are you able to take a step back and take everything in before the match of semi-state, knowing knowing how close you are, but how much work is yeah. still ahead that afternoon. A, li a little bit. I think the hard part about postseason is you enjoy it. You enjoy the victory for that night, and the next day you start planning. So right. it's it's kind of a hit and miss. It's kind of back and forth on that. And I think that is a hard thing to. Um, teach kids, but our kids have been doing a great job with that. And Have you gotten better at that as a coach? I would say I've that... balanced that a lot better. Yeah. I have a better game plan than I used to. Um, I can turn it on and off a little bit easier than I used to. And then we make time for the, when it's all over, we make time to celebrate at the end. Well, coach, there's only two more left. Let's take a look at the bracket and fingers are crossed for Lutheran again. This is at Jasper. Huge matchup to come on the other side of the bracket at Plymouth Blackhawk Christian, a great program out of the Fort Wayne area in Southwood. Coach Anderson, we can say we're pulling for the Saints the rest of the way here in the Zone Extra. Please go play your best match and see what happens in semi-state, okay? Thank you very much. That's our plan. <laughs> great to have you on the show. That's Coach Anderson. Please go support the Saints. We know the football team's making some noise this fall, too. Still ahead on the Zone Extra, we're going to feature our Zone Athletes of the Week this weekend. A pair of Park Tudor soccer teammates are going to compete in multiple state tournament events. Am I reading this correctly? Senior Gretchen Farley and sophomore Paige Dill, you'll meet them next. Plus, we're going to hit campus. What's going on at Clemson? That is Zionsville star golfer Annabelle Pancake. That story's next. This is the Zone Extra, presented by Franciscan Health Sports Medicine. This is the Zone Extra. Charlie Clifford with you tonight. This Saturday night, Park Tudor girls soccer playing for a state championship. But that's not the only postseason action for two Panthers who are finding success in multiple sports this fall. I don't know if we've ever seen this. Friday night, Park Tudor's football team and sophomore kicker Paige Dill travel to Fountain Central for a sectional semifinal. Saturday morning, senior runner Gretchen Farley competes in the cross country state championship in Terre Haute. Saturday night, both suit up in the 1A soccer state championship as top ranked Park Tudor plays Fort Wayne Canterbury. How about this? The girls are excited for the busiest weekend of their lives and the coolest weekend of their lives. It's definitely both mentally and physically challenging just from the standpoint of physically like, you know, you have to go to soccer, get with soccer practice and then afterwards I do my cross country workout um, and it physically that it gets really tiring. It's super exciting too, um, just for both teams um, like something that I haven't experienced that I can't wait and hopefully we can do it in the future again. Teamwork has been a really big thing, especially the community, working together and knowing each other. I think that's really helped us. First thing you can't deny is just the commitment to, for Paige for football and soccer, um, for Gretchen and cross country uh, and soccer. I guess the most important thing for me is as a coach, I can't teach a young individual to be an athlete. Um, both Paige and Gretchen are probably two of the best student athletes that we've had at Park Tudor in my four years here. Waking up Saturday morning, just taking it one event at a time. Um, on Saturday morning, I'm just going to really focus in the cross country, um, put all my mind power into that and uh, do my best. And, you know, once we do our best at that, move on and uh, focus on the soccer state then. Nothing I've ever experienced before, considering it's football, but um, when it came down to the wire, it's just we were all praying and it's a new experience. And then just to, as to get like a team together um, as winning, it's just like it's incredible. We are not sports nutritionists on the Zone Extra, but a good lunch Saturday afternoon seems to be very important. That is incredible. We salute you both. Good luck. All right, we're going to take a quick break here. When we come back, Commissioner Paul Neidig of the IHSAA. We're going to speak to him, plus sectional semifinal night on the Zone tomorrow night. We'll be back. This is the Zone Extra, presented by Franciscan Health Sports Medicine. 
Welcome back to the Zone Extra. Let's go to campus tonight where we catch up with a former Central Indiana high school athlete competing at the top of the golf world. Let's go to the links at Clemson. Former Zionsville Eagle Annabelle Pancake in the middle of her junior season with the Tigers. Over the summer, she found a ton of success on the course. Second place finish at the Western Am. That's mega. A sweet 16 appearance in her US Am. However, the youngster, Annabelle telling us golf really wasn't a priority. She had to learn to fall in love with this game much later than you think. I actually hated golf from like age eight to 13. I just, oh, I hated it so much. But then I kind of reached the age like 14, 15, getting into high school. And my parents kind of told me like, you can, you can play this in college and be really good. And I think that's kind of when I realized I wanted to take it to the next level. And I would like to try and go on tour um, after college. I'm definitely going to try and go through Q school and try to get my tour card. After all of these years of hard work, I feel like I should. The confidence is definitely transferred over and um, just kind of knowing that I can do that and like I can play well in the summer. So um, who knows, sky's the limit. Hopefully it continues to transfer into the next year or two. That's a great role model in Central Indiana. Great family. Best of luck to Annabelle. Now, it's time for Ask the Commissioner. Each week we take one of your questions to the top of the IHSA. Commissioner Paul Neidig delivers his knowledge. Here is this week's question. Mr. Commish, as the World Series begins tomorrow, what's your favorite World Series memory? Well, unfortunately, I always show my age a little bit in these favorite memories, but uh, I got to tell you, Mr. October, Reggie Jackson going around the bases, giving that old fist pump. Uh, see, it just hit a home run for the Yankees. Uh, you know, that that is just one of those moments that is ingrained in me. And I, so it really kind of, for me, it's when I first start realizing how important sport was and how fun it could be. And, and, and Reggie Jackson hitting those home runs in October, uh, were certainly great memories for me. Mr. Kamesh, you always keep us young here. Please don't, don't rouse yourself like that. All right, submit your question, send us a tweet, use the hashtag, the zone extra hashtag, ask the commission, you can be on the show. One of our favorite parts of covering high school sports in central Indiana, it's the passion of you, the fans, the best in the Midwest. We hand out the best award in the Midwest, the prestigious zone banner, it's going out and we're getting close to playoff time here in zone banner world. This is what the students are going after presented by the crew car wash. We're going to give this banner to the school in the zone that has the best, most positive, infectious school spirit. Who's going to be the 2022 champ? We're going to announce the top eight finalists on the zone tomorrow night. You need to join us at 1108, our play of the week this week. Mooresville hosting Lebanon, a game we talked about earlier, but we did not show you this. Over the shoulder, Hogan Denny, pioneer touchdown, and we're grooving the moves from Denny one more time. That is play of the week, no doubt about it. They get rebuffed tomorrow night. Best of luck to the pioneers. Please submit us your plays. Use the hashtag, the zone extra. If you're out at a game on Friday night and you look to the person sitting next to you say, that is insane. You got to send it to us. It's this easy. Get it on the zone extra next week. Best of luck to all the teams tomorrow night. Miami TV 23, you already know this. It's your home for local high school sports in central Indiana. And tomorrow night, it's a Hamilton County sectional showdown. In 6A, last year's state runner up Westfield on the road at seventh ranked Carmel. Good luck getting a seat for that. Why don't you just join us on My ND TV 23? Kickoff with Greg Raystrow is at 7 o'clock. It's a big night of tournament action. You know it's winner go home time. AC at the tailgate at Carmel. We'll see you then for the entire crew tonight. Brian Eckstein, Charlie Clifford. We'll see you next week.